the left hand side I think you can pick that one up left hand side of the green yes I'm out doing some proper testing on the course I've been to some sunnier places as you've already seen in the intro we put these irons to the test well and truly both over in Scottsdale Arizona and I'm back here in Conway and I'll give you my overall opinion on what I think PXG have managed to do with Gen 3 irons yeah, it's fair to say I've gone to great lengths to test these things and like I said, I had a great uh, week over in Arizona testing these products out in Scottsdale. I actually got custom fit for a set of irons and uh, I filmed all that process as well, which is in a separate video that you might want to look at. But specifically, I'm just going to talk about the performance of these irons and uh, how they fared in the hands of an average golfer. First of all, let's start off with the looks and I think the big deal for me with PXG um, is how unique they look. But is that, uh, you know, I, I suppose... It's very much each to their own, what suits the eye of the individual. But I love the look of PXG. Like I said, it's very much of a, uh, a product that stands out in the marketplace, very recognisable. But if you look at the back side of this club, for me, they've just gone a little bit further in terms of uh, the detail, uh, in terms of design. I love this milling across the back. Does it enhance performance? Well, I don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I. But the point is, it just looks superb. It's that fine detail. And then you look at the club's profile, there's ultimately three models. We've got the players, we've got the tour. Should have started that the other way around. We've got the tour, we've got the players, and then we've got the XP, which is extreme performance. And they each differ as you would expect. It's all about size and profile, and uh, that's from the top line, and then from underneath sole width, and then from overall profile, heel to toe. And they're each aimed at a different golfer. And for me, through the custom fit process and what I've then managed to try back over in the UK, was the players club it sat absolute perfect for me in the sense that very small and compact not too different from the tour product and in performance wise in numbers wise it didn't disappoint in terms of where the tour product if i had a slight um some off center hits which uh, i will have as an average golfer i lost a little bit of yardage and performance but with the actual player's model, I didn't get that at all. And it's a very forgiving club face, which I think is the important thing to mention, first of all. But then if you're looking for extreme performance, then that's the model for you. It's a stronger lofted product. It's a bigger profile. And it's an absolute beast. This thing goes for miles, let me tell you. But like I said, not necessarily for me in this instance. But we've got to talk about the tech spec and what goes into these products. And I think that whilst I can sort of relay some information... I had the opportunity to speak to uh, Brad Schweiger and Mike Nicolette, who are the brains behind the PXG operation in terms of club design, that is. And uh, I think it's probably best off, first of all, let's have a quick chat to Brad about what is the impact reactor and how it is playing a major part in the enhanced performance in Gen 3 irons. You know, as we, as we, as we continue to focus on materials and polymers and learn a lot more about the, the, the behavior of polymers, um, then we figured out a way to make it even better. And that's, that's where we are now with Gen 3. Yeah. And, and we have our, what we're calling our impact reactor, which is powered by our um, extreme dual core technology. And we've really we kind of taken a little bit of almost like golf ball style construction and put it inside I'm of sorry. the golf club. And so we have this, this really soft, high, extremely high COR um, core material that when you, when you hit it, it loads and it, 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 instead of absorbing or taking away energy, it acts more like a super ball and it just stores and then rebounds that, that energy back in the golf ball. But it allows the face to move a bit, bit more. Our face is 58 thousandths. It's an extremely thin face. And we have, we've also added a cutout around the perimeter of the face geometry to really activate the face. So we get this, this whole system to, to load and store that potential energy and then rebound it back into the golf ball. Mm -hmm. And so in order to support that structure, we actually have a secondary layer of material that's a, um, a little bit st a stronger material that's on the outside directly behind the face. And so all the materials work together to provide the strength that we need along with the, the, the flex and, the, and the, the, the potential energy rebound back into the golf ball. So you've heard that from Brad, but uh, I'm now going to go over to Mike Nicolette. We'll switch back again. But what he's explaining here is there's a new material that's uh, an evolution from what we've seen in Gen 1, Gen 2, and now what is inside the magic potion that sits inside of these club heads and uh, how it impacts on performance and how they've managed to, like I said, 
that product has evolved to what it is in Gen 3. This is our TPE material, this was Gen 1 material, and again, uh, the, the main uh, idea here was to try to dampen vibration in the club head, so yeah. we found a material that really, you know, dampens vibration, and if you drop it, you can see that there's really not much uh, rebound in that material, so the material itself is absorbing the energy, but it's also absorbing the sound, and, and it gave us a really unique feel. Uh, when we went to Gen 2, we started to look to get more ball speed and we went with a, a different material that is a much higher COR. So uh, if we drop this, you'll notice that it, it rebounds significantly yeah. higher, but also it has a, a firmer sound, sound yeah, yeah. right? So now if we go to our Gen 3 material, yeah. this is an extremely high COR material and, and you'll notice that very quiet and wow. very good rebound so if we were to the difference of those so things? here's the difference of gen 2 gen 3 and that's what we're seeing yeah. when the ball comes off the wow. face of the club yeah. it's amazing the performance benefit that this gives us yeah yeah right. and i think i can bear that out in terms of feel and we'll talk about that element now in terms of feel and sound they're unreal they're for me it's the one major step forward i can see from gen 2 because ultimately that's the question that I asked myself when I first tested these was that I was a big fan of Gen 2 and I did question how they were going to move that bar forward again. They certainly have done that and in one element, the first element is sound and feel. It's hugely, it's just, it's just pure. It just feels absolute pure. It sounds, it feels like butter. I was going to say it sounds like butter, but I'm not sure what that sounds like. It's soft, also very, very soft, but at the same time that ball is firing out the club face. I think for me, in terms of the way this uh, impact reactor, as they call it, but ultimately this forgiveness, this ball speeds across the club face, it was so, so consistent in its performance. And I brought it back to do some dry ball data testing myself in terms of in the UK. And if you see the numbers, I've tested seven iron and four iron. The point is, is that they do exactly what you'd expect them to do in terms of the yardages of both, but it's the consistency of both. They there's more variables in the four iron than there is in the seven, and again, that's going to be down to the swing of the average golfer. But in terms of consistency and number, consistency of spin, launch, ball speeds, that is the key thing. And for an average golfer to get those consistent numbers off a club, it's, and a club with a profile as small and compact as this, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a leap forward in terms of levels, and that's the big key point for me. The reason I've switched the camera back on and come just uh, cut in a little bit, that's going to, yeah, just short right. Was one of the things I've noticed more so since uh, I've had a couple of clubs to try back here in the UK and out on the course at Conway, there's a lot of wind blowing around and on a Lynx course like this, you need to flight that ball a little bit differently at times. And I think that the one thing I just want to quick mention is that these clubs have the ability to do exactly that. And the P model in particular, which is the one I'm testing, I think, does appeal to a real broad spectrum of golfers and like I said if you've got the ability to A shape the ball or B want to flight it a little bit differently then you can do that with this club head very little offset and like I said it's a proper pure iron in terms of what you're able to do with it and then at the other end of the spectrum if you're not looking for those kind of things then the XP certainly does all the other things that you're looking for in terms of that extreme forgiveness powerful bit of help off the club face higher assistance with launch so there's a model that suits everybody but for me on a personal level this p model ticks every box so in terms of summary i'm not going to go on too much about this you've seen quite a bit of testing been done the way i would summarize is this for me and for many golfers the 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 goal over the years has always been i've seen it move forward over the last couple of years is to ultimately build a forge club in a small profile thinner top line as we can possibly get butter soft feel great sound and consistent performance with forgiveness built in and if you can do that to me you've got the ultimate set of irons now i can't go as bold enough to say they've got the ultimate set of irons but i'll tell you now i would ask anybody to go out there and find criticism in because i can't find a criticism that's the problem in this one there's no area in there that I could put any kind of critique on this thing that would suggest anything negative because they tick all the boxes I've just said. Everything that I have asked as an individual, as a golfer, 
uh, over the last couple of years. What I would like to see in an iron is exactly built into these Gen 3 irons. And for me, the P product is a standout product for an average golfer. The improvement that they can make is always going to be, and always the criticism that's going to be in the comments down below, is to bring it in at a price point that is more accessible to the masses. I have no control over that, you have no control over that, and ultimately that is always going to be where PXG, I think, sits in the marketplace. But that's the only improvement I would like to see, so more and more people could access and make use of this product, because it literally ticks every box. It is superb, even so much as the change in the perimeter weighting. The fact that I'm going to throw one last visual up here now, I don't know whether you picked up on it, but in Gen 2, the perimeter weighting was balanced a little bit skew whiffed in terms of off centre visually and now it's all neat and for someone with OCD it balances itself out perfectly across the club face. There is nothing I can find to criticise I'm afraid. Right, I'm going to carry on playing a few more holes around Conway Golf Club. I'll carry on testing these products and we'll do some head to heads throughout the months ahead and see how it compares to all the other major releases that are on the way or have been released in these last few weeks and months uh, but as ever thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you all very very soon i never thought i'd be doing a gloves like uh, tommy two gloves gainy but it's uh, it's sunny but a bit chilly down here in conway not as warm as it was in scottsdale <laughs>